Ever seen this kind of a memory graph within an application? If you didn't, it's probably a matter of time. This is a graph showing the memory consumption of an application's process over time. And these stairs going up, this is a memory leak. The darker green area marks the capacity of the container running the application, and the drops in memory are happening whenever it reaches the peak, where there is no more memory left for the container, and it crashes, and then another one is started. Here's a larger history span, where one can clearly see how long this has been going on. Memory leaks can become extremely frustrating. Knowing how to prevent them is one thing, but knowing how to get rid of them can sometimes become tricky. So tricky that developers may tend to ignore them forever, relying on infrastructure to keep rotating the machine when it dies. Think I'm making this up? Here's Theo, one of the best developers in the space, saying live how memory leaks are not an issue when you run with serverless. Uh, memory leaks and runtime slowness. Uh, do you know what helps with these? Lambda, serverless. The fun of serverless is if you have a memory leak, it doesn't matter because the instance dies and gets remade. You don't have to worry if your runtime is temporary and you're not maintaining a very long process. You know what I think? That's an insane statement. Now, mind you, I'm not trying to bash on Theo. I'm actually a big fan of his work and content, but on this matter, I feel it's touching my soft ops feelings. I won't go here into the intricacies of serverless as a choice when it makes sense or it doesn't. I have a weekly podcast where I've covered this topic, so you're welcome to catch it here. Now back to memory leaks. Being able to monitor different metrics of the application or the system can make or break an application's lifecycle. Memory leaks become exponentially harder to solve as time progresses, so just think about it. In my case, I'm running on Fly.io, check the video up here if you want to learn more. Memory leaks don't just form out of thin air, they're usually a result of memory allocated by the program that's not getting released and keeps building up until the container or the server doesn't have any room to operate and then the process usually dies. So when does memory doesn't get released you may ask? Think about setting global variables that live throughout the process's lifetime or a database connection that's opened every time you reach out for a query but never gets closed. This can also be a background routine running on another thread that is forgotten in the background. All of these can cause the stairs graph that you've seen earlier, but how do you deal with it? This is exactly where profilers come in. A profiler can create a profile of the CPU or the memory in use by the application and report what's consuming the resource. Since I'm using Golang, I'll be using its profiler pprof. Using it has two parts, one profiling and two analyzing. Profiling goes something like this. You dump the memory in the app at a certain point in time when the code runs, preferably another time or multiple times throughout the lifecycle of the app to be able to later compare one to another. Since my stairs here are one hour wide and I have a schedule routine that runs every hour, I have an immediate suspect to analyze. Let's set up pprof to dump the memory. I'll set it up twice. One where the process starts naturally on main.go. The library I'll be using is runtime slash pprof. Using that, I'll be dumping the memory into a pprof file on the local disk. Let's find the process that was in charge of the hourly schedule. I'll go to my schedule file. I'll find the process that runs every hour. I can see that this is scan users bot and going to the definition using the LSP, I can get to the function that's in charge of that loop. This code isn't amazing. I'm sorry about that, but let's focus on finding the memory leak. And so this is the second point of measurement. Again, same way, I'm dumping the same memory into a pprof file, but this time I'm going to call it after scan users. I'll open my floating terminal and run the application in order for both files to be written to the disk so we can then open them and analyze them. And there they are, my two pprof files, one from before the scan and one after that, that we can now analyze and track what's going on. You can already notice the difference in sizes. One is 970 bytes and the other is 2.8 kilobytes. It's time to run the analysis tool by running go tool preprof. I'm going to send this to the local web at port 80. Since both localhost and port 80 are defaults, I'm just providing colons surrounded by quotes to tell the profiler to use the defaults. And here's the graph. I can see a standard chain of operations and consumption rate. The shapes of the subprocesses change in size if they're allocating significantly more memory than others. Since this is the initial profile ran when the application launched, I don't expect anything out of the ordinary here. This is just for later comparison. 
if we take a look at the list or the heat map, we can see that there's nothing really marked in red that takes a lot of memory. So this looks relatively okay. Let's analyze the next dump, taken after the hourly schedule first run. There's a huge box showing an allocation of over half a megabyte in memory. That seems like it has a dead end to it. It shows Gcron as a subprocess, which is in charge of the allocated memory. I don't necessarily suspect Gcron specifically, as it's just a scheduler. It's not completely off my radar, but I'm suspecting there's something within that process that's not being released. Let's take another look at my code. This large function is querying the database many times to collect user information and make decisions based on what's gathered. If we quickly recall what causes leaks, I can tick off the list of globals, as I'm not using any, and the routines are largely managed for me. Database connections, however, are being created left and right. Here's a list of every point in my code where I open a new connection and create a pointer to it. The method that generates them opens the database and returns a pointer. But when is this ever getting released? Moreover, do I actually need a new connection with every query? Why not share one when the application starts? I'm not Theo, serverless is not part of my infrastructure here. Let's take this approach forward and view the effect. To manage a single connection, I'm going to create a variable that's going to be held within the main loop of the application. The method to creating it can remain, but I'm going to use it one time and one time only when the application launches. Here's the setup of dbcon, the variable that will hold the connection. I've replaced every reference to the method creating a connection to a variable reference, as simple as that. By the way, I went into the basics and settings of seeing the references, going to definitions and more in the video up here. You can also find videos about jumps and quick navigation in the Vim list of my channel or the video showing up now. It's time then to analyze the memory dump taken after the schedule, but also after the fixes were applied. And sure enough, we're back to the same source graph we've seen when the process just started. Mission accomplished, there's only one way to know. Let's review the memory monitoring graph once again. See the flat line? When it comes to memory consumption, that is great news. It seems the application is not growing in memory, suggesting memory allocated is getting released. Reusing the database connection throughout did the trick. Mission complete. Thank you for watching, and here's another thing I think you should take a look at.